you're ready, introduce yourselves and begin, please. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chairperson, uh, fellow colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Derek Munz. I'm from Solidarity Union Official in the ICT industry. Next to me is uh, Marius Kraukamp, who is my industry head in terms of the ICT industry. Background to this issue. Um, Solidarity is one of the oldest trade unions in South Africa. Its origins date back to 1902. Since its inception, Solidarity and its predecessor, the Mine Workers Union, has been closely linked to the course of South African history. Solidarity represents 150,000 members in different industries. Thousands of these members are employed in the information, communication and technology industry placing solidarity in the midst of the debate on a local loop unbundling. Solidarity is on record by saying we welcome the release of the discussion document regarding the LLU by the department uh, by ICASA, but finds that the attempted ex ante regulations premature. The motivation behind the introduction of local loop unbundling is based on, on standard network economics, uh, where more users will generate more traffic and, de and therefore reduces reduced per unit costs. This is this was said by CASA councillor uh, Tabo Makanya um, via media briefing on 22 June 2011. The goal of local uh, local loop and bundling is to ensure that access to existing infrastructure is achieved in a fair and adequate manner to ensure that, among others. More people are connected to the internet through fixed line or other connections. Consumers have more choice about who prov uh, provides what services for fixed line connect connectivity. Jobs in the industry are secure. Local Loop in the case of South Africa also represents a revenue generation opportunity for all operators, including telecom which further supports both retention and job creation. It is our submission that there is no adequate research to verify that the local loop will in fact result in more competition in a market or lower prices. It is also unclear whether the demand for war brand is big enough to justify unbundling. With the introduction of mobile service providers, SPs, no significant cost reduction for consumers were introduced. There is, however, emerging evidence that the sector may need less regulation in the form of retail price regulations and local loop unbundling and better policy making and regulation in respect of spectrum allocation. In South Africa, at least in respect of the supply of broadband internet access services to residential in Soho, small office, home office customers. There is at least some initial evidence that wireless technology offer an alternative to fixed line for residential in Soho customers. While these products may not be perfect substitutes and may not be in the same market for antitrust purposes, the products probably are sufficiently uh, su sustainable to warrant lifting prices regulations of these services. The evidence certainly suggests that scare regulation resources ought to be allocated to radio frequency spectrums allocation rather than cumbersome local loop unbundling and price regulation processes. Now, we <laughs> solidarity quoted the local loop unbundling versus encouragement to growth of wireless local loop lessons for South Africa from other countries, Ryan Hawthorne. Further to state that the proposal will generate more traffic might be true, but for whom? It's common cause that the local loop will apply to the existing local loops and therefore only end users in urban areas will be benefited by it. The majority of SA citizens do not have access to fixed line communication. In 2009, only 17% of South African households had access to landlines. We quote that stats SA in terms of the household survey of 2009. Local loop will not narrow the digital divide between the haves and have-nots. The government's 38% share in telecom is surely contrary to the government's objectives 
of uni universal broadband access for all. So do you want to go back to... <coughs> Let me just see. It seems the, that part of the motivation for implementing local loop is that Telcom will, after it has been implemented, have a stronger incentive to expand infrastructure to areas where citizens currently have no access to fixed line infrastructure. The possibility is extremely unlikely. Local loop that causes revenue losses for Telcom will probably have the opposite effect. Local loop networks will, will be provided oh sorry, local loop network access will be provided to, SP, uh, to uh, SPs where infrastructure is already in existence. Telcom is on record to state that it invested more than 65 million in its network from 1991 to 2010. This has been submitted um, to uh, the regulator by the regulated department of Telcom. Solidarity is on record over potential job losses at Telcom. The process proposed local loop in its current form will result in an 80% decrease of income for Telcom and therefore undoubtedly lead to job losses. We were quoted in, in IT web and that is a citation. Telcom is the single biggest employer in the ICT sector with 23,000 full-time employees and this is in terms of the annual report in 2011. Some of Telcom's biggest competitors, namely MTN, employ 6,500 employees and Vodacom 5,000, give and take. They would be the biggest beneficiaries of the local loop unbundling. Telcom has already communicated to the authority that the cost of the implementation of the LLU and the net revenues forego to competitors would su substantially decrease Telcom's operating model. This may leave Telcom with no alternative but to review its workforce su size. According to Telcom, the cost of the local loop unbundling will range between 159 million rand to 850 million rand and will cause revenue losses of more than 466 million rand in the next five years. Once again, the quotation is from Tele Telcom Regulatory Department. Thus, while the President of South Africa announced a five-year job creation plan in his State of the Nation address of 2011. A major concern for solidarity is that local loop will also not necessarily generate employment opportunities in the telecoms industry. Solidarity has observed that some SPs, especially telecoms competitors, sometimes opt to use foreign employees instead of South Africans to fill vacancies in South Africa. The question that you actually want to ask that don't South Africa have the expertise to fill that positions? We are of the opinion that these employers should first consider SA citizens to fill these positions before hand hunting foreigners to fill them. Our proposal <coughs> at this juncture, Solidarity proposes that, uh, that the proposal of IP stream of bird stream access as an alternative physical local loop unbundling is worth investigating, as it could deliver some of the benefits local loop without many of the technical and practical drawbacks. Solidarity to some extent support Telcom in its belief that the principle of open access, including access to the local loop and its equivalent in a broadcasting environment should be equitable, that is proportionally applied to all licensees in the communication industry, including network providing mobile cellular services. Sir, Maurice. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to make it very clear that solidarity is a labor movement. Uh, we work with people. We are not expert service providers or technical experts uh, in terms of, of, of local loops. However, we do represent people, and our policy, I want to make very clear in six points quickly. Uh, we see our role as being a watchdog, to help prevent job losses and to assist in job creation in this industry. Uh, we support sustainable development of all elements of this industry. We believe local, shoop, local loops sorry, sh should be implemented so that it benefits all. Local loop should be implemented in a way that will be fair to Telcom 
and we're being motivated by that because we do have substantial membership within Telcom. We believe that local loops should be implemented in a way that will also benefit the consumer. And Solidarity is committed to work with ECASA and the industry to enable an equitable conclusion to this process. Thank you. Thank you. Point of clarification. On your last slide, you used the word broadcasting. What do you mean there? So what we say there, that is a broad, that's a, that's a, you're referring to this slide, sir. There is a direct uh, quotation from, from Telcom submission to the local, um, to the, to the authority. And what we, what we mean, what we mean with that is, uh, if we want to unbundle, we must total unbundle all type of indus excuse me if we're going to unbundle not only telecom we need to we need to unbundle SPs as well and what we are saying with that is sir, is what we mean with that is if once again put it on record we're not against unbundling it needs to it needs to follow through in terms of chapter 8 of the ECA it says that it needs to happen so we're not against that what we are just saying is Telcom spend millions and millions of rands on their infrastructure. What we are saying is, if you want access to my, uh, sorry, not mine, my previous, my previous incumbents, <laughs> um, what we are saying is, sir, is if you, if 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 an entity would like have want to have access to Telcom's infrastructure, which they paid out of their own money. And, and we unbundle local loop. It needs to be through wireless. It needs to be to the SPs as well, so that everybody has the same can can um, can um, start the race from the same premises. Then we telcom left off. And if I can go one step further, sir, um, what we're also saying is, if you would like to have access. To, to, to Telcom's infrastructure and it goes through to the local loop. Let Telcom maintain that issue of um, service or, or maintaining that, 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 that infrastructure. That will lessen maybe the job losses because if we go continue and once again I don't want to move away from our mandate and that is job preservation and job security and job creation is that should we believe Telcom in their submission that 80% of their revenue will be under pressure and we do and we do lose our four to five thousand members that we currently have in in, in in Telcom what is going to be the uptake of other of other SPs are they really going to employ that four to five thousand members or or employees no it might not if you look at the ratio per, per, per line today so what we are saying is in order for this to go through, a balance must be struck, not to put Telcom's um, business model under pressure. Thank you. So if I understand you correctly in that paragraph there, you mean the word wireless. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Rather than broadcast. Thank you. Okay. okay um Thank you, Chair. Just my question that I pose to every union, to the union that presented this morning, but I think you've touched up on it. Just to get it on record, you are saying that solidarity supports, uh, it's not against LLU implementation, and you are not, you supporting the Chapter 8 facilities leasing uh, approach. Just to be clear on that. Madam Councillor, yes, we are. Uh, we do support. It is it is in the act. It's part. It's it's promulgated. We cannot be against it. It must just be equitable. And my second question, therefore, is: uh, Do you believe that, or do you have? What is your view that uh, LLU would increase broadband penetration in the country? Okay, ma'am. What what we are saying with that is, and I just want to get my. My document, yeah, because I knew that question was going to come, and uh, you know, prepare to fail, uh, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Um, on that, I need to, uh, I need to refer you to a, a document that was on, 
or a, how can I say, a media release from the Department of Communication um, on engineering news uh, in the 23rd of August, where they talk about um, the digital, uh, sorry, uh, the SA sets ambitious 2020 universal broadband target where the Department of Communication has set its site on, on 2020 as the target date for attending, attaining universal broadband in internet penetration. In their, in their uh, media release, they, they refer to broadband penetration in South Africa currently stands at 12% of the population. Um, and the, the DOC views 100% penetration by 2020. What that actually means is that every citizen, every person in his house needs to have access. Now, another thing that, that I need to quote on this on the statement, it, it refers to, it was investigated that jobs in a communication, in a communication, I would, I would think that they refer to the sector, it would be created through the entire ICT and postal services value chain, including infrastructure rollout, content development, access to banking facility, and the creative of jobs. Uh, now, the, the, the interesting part is, and when we refer to the 38% of government's uh, shares in telecom, the DOC goes further and states that to, to identify direct jobs that could be created through its interventions, and those of state-owned entities, it has identified 160,000 jobs that could be created through broadband infrastructure in, uh, innovatives by 2020. Now, if one listens to the, the previous speakers, they all might have valid arguments, but not one of them has actually quoted what job, uh, job creation they will, what is the job creation strategies? And that is why we will play that watchdog, watchdog um, role to see if there is really going to be a job creation, uh, if there's going to be job creation. Sister, I think we would agree that there will be an uptake increase, uh, but yes. at what cost? Uh, and that's our role to, to make sure that there's a balance. It does not help to increase on, on one side and have a lot of job losses or a collapse of in infrastructure later on. That's why we say we support the industry and we'll work with the regulator on this. But we need to do this in a balanced and sustainable manner. Um, it, is it in your members' interest to grow the size of Telcom's ADSL network? It's difficult to say. Uh, it depends on what the impact would be in terms of employee numbers or employee benefits. Um, Telcom currently employs around about 23,000 employees. Um, half of those are unionized. We represent roughly three and a half, close to 4,000 employees. So in, our interest would be, will that create jobs? Will that uh, make job security? And will it benefit the, the, the end user? Uh, that, that's a test that we will have. So, if, so just also, um, that is whence we've also made that request that should full on local unbundling go through, the telco maintain that part of maintaining the infrastructure because then you, then you can have that part of job preservation. Oh, sorry, job preservation. Um, but, but would you agree that uh, there's such a thing as a network effect? In other words, that the more people you have on a network, the greater the value of that network. And that one of the things that we're looking at here is how do we maximize the value of the ADSL network uh, in the country. Um, and one of the proposals coming uh, through the LLU process would be to say, uh, if one looks at MWeb's submission, that uh, Bitstream is a, is a way of growing the, the network. And then the value of the whole network would increase for everyone involved. So I think yes, um, you know, and we support MWeb 
with the undertaking that to give, to, to investigate if the stream will be, uh, you know, to follow that route and to investigate the stream, and and that's part of our proposal. Um, yeah, I think we, we're talking here about the scale of economics. If there's a, a bigger usage, put it in simple terms, obviously it would benefit all. However, where will that benefit go? Uh, will it create jobs? Will it make the business more sustainable? Will the public benefit? Uh, just the total net effect, where will it go? And critical to, to our view is, will it make and secure more sustainability for the industry in the long term? Thank you, Chair. Uh, you made a statement that small small businesses don't necessarily need ADSL. They've got substitutes, whereas uh, my broadband was qu quite strong of the view that small businesses need ADSL connectivity. So you've got a proposal that wireless connectivity is a substitute for small businesses. You've got my broadband saying absolutely not. What is your view on that? And secondly, you, I asked this question earlier this morning, whether the regulator should trust what the licensees tell us. Uh, you quote Telcom's regulatory division telling you that local loop unbundling could have an 80% decrease in Telcom revenue. Should you be trusting that? So may I answer, can I answer that question by posing a question? So, and I've also referred to what you also said this morning. Is Ecosa not then um, trusting their licensees? Um, because <laughs> you posed that question this morning and I think, I think that answer that, so it, you know what, uh, it, it goes with integrity. And, and what I mean with that is that has been submitted to you on record by Telcom. And who are we to say we cannot trust that submission? The question about small businesses? So look, it's worth investigating into that option. If you would see, that was also a direct quotation from, from a document um, where, um, let me just get that, where R Ryan Hawthorne actually wrote a whole document pertaining to this. And so we, 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 what we just basically said is that is the type of initiatives one needs to obviously investigate. Uh, final question. You've seen Telcom ATA's mobile prices, mobile data prices. They're very, very attractive, to say the least, compared to others. Would you not say that these price bundles are cannibalizing the ADSL network and therefore cannibalizing the job opportunities in the Telcom fixed space anyway? Would it be politically correct to say I don't have an opinion on that? <laughs> Look, it's certainly uh, revolutionary what's happening. It has a new, fairly new entrant in, in, entrant in that market, and uh, one would expect certain initiatives to happen. The, the long-term sustainability test once, once more will suffice. Uh, what will this do to the industry? I think we all, all welcomed another role play when, when ITA was established just around about a year ago uh, and how the rest of the service providers will respond to that. Um, we cannot give a comment on whether we believe it cannibalizes the industry or not. I think uh, we're not in a position to do that. It's not our role. However, uh, we, we are informed of what what the impact of that is, and we've, we've not seen any negative impacts in yet. Uh, we, we do have members in the other service providers as well. Uh, however, the, the most engaging provider in terms of these issues were, was Telcom. Uh, we did approach many of these other guys, and they simply were not prepared to, to technically engage with us. And you know, if they talk to us about this, then we can be better informed of their view. 
and they, they left it to come here to, to these tables today and, and come present their, their view over the, the three days that set out. Um, so um, it's going to be extremely dangerous for us to really agree or disagree on that. We, we rather have no comment on, on that issue. But a fairly interesting question. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you mentioned that the introduction of LLU will inevitably result to job losses. Uh, do you have any proof of this assertion or a research uh, to back this argument? Ma'am, it goes well back again to, to Councillor uh, Groote's question of trust. Um, once mm. again, we uh, we have just gone on record to say that our interaction with 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 the providers were more more with with the current incumbent in Telcom. So we understood their strategy and in, in, as well as their argument and. That is what they submitted, uh, and once again, we we've gone through retrenchments um, four years ago, where we were part and parcel of that arguments and and 189 processes. So, and we've already seen when the business model started changing four years ago, that that was a, in fact a reality, and we cannot move away from that reality and. If if you look at all the evidence on the table, then it might be a reality as well. Um. Just looking again at the issue of job creation, or, um, the, the reason we pose, pose the question about whether LLU will increase broadband penetration is that uh, there is research that says that for every 10% increase in broadband penetration, uh, there is a corresponding roughly 1.38% increase in, in gross domestic product. So one can then say, well, if that is the case, um, does that not benefit the country as a whole and all its citizens um, and uh, possibly have some uh, knock-on effects with regard to jobs and uh, general economic well-being? So do you have any thoughts about that way of seeing uh, LLU as a contributor to an increase in broadband penetration and hence to an increase in the uh, value of the economy. Certainly from, from the view that the angle that you've came from, uh, we would certainly agree with that. Um, it, it would benefit the consumer, it would benefit companies out there. Um, but where will that benefit go? Will it go to shareholders? Will it create jobs? Will it come back into the economy? Um, that, that is the question. Um, we do support any initiative that will grow this industry. Um, we are not just there to, to police telecom, but we are here to assist the entire industry to create jobs, to, to try and to make sure even our members, our broader membership, those even outside the industry, are consumers as well, and linked to their families, this is a support base one uh, far beyond a million. Um, and we must make sure there's a benefit to them as well. However, the cost of that benefit should be calculated. Uh, one should do things that will not just create short-term gains, but long-term sustainability for, for the industry and for jobs. Uh, I don't want to give you a too wider answer, but yes, I would agree in principle. However, the cost of that implementation should be looked at. We've not seen a significant growth in employee numbers in the sector. Uh, fairly stable employment, Telcom uh, coming down actually, MTN, Vodacom staying more or less the same. Uh, some of the other operators, we've seen them come down. Uh, so 
we will welcome, if there's a bigger uptake of consumption, we will welcome that if that creates jobs as well. Do we have any questions from the public? Thank you, Solidarity, and thank you everyone who's attended. We've finished just a little over an hour early. I doubt we'll finish quite so early tomorrow.